Welcome to Down Ancient Trails for kids. Let's explore the fascinating world of stone tools made and used by our prehistoric ancestors in India. First of all, what is prehistory? It's a time long, long ago, way before written records, thousands of grandmothers ago. A time marked by the fascinating story of human evolution and dramatic climate change, where ancient stone tools have a thousand stories to tell. Why is prehistory important? Prehistory gives us clues as to why we behave and look like what we are today. We can ask the following questions. Did the people of the time have families as we do? What did they eat? What did the children play with? What were climates like? What did they look like? When did they have language? Why do we help each other? And finally, why do we have such big brains? Prehistoric sites are found all over India. Do you know of any sites near where you live? Archaeologists classify prehistory into many different cultural phases, often with different species who had many types of tools. They also had interesting ways of life, ranging from hunting and gathering to farming crops and herding animals. Let's talk about stone tools. Tools are objects that help us do things easily. Can you name some tools that you use today? Look at this axe here. Can you see how it has changed through time? Why do you think tools and technologies have changed? Can you think of some modern examples? Prehistoric stone tools were used for hunting animals, gathering plant foods and fishing, engraving designs, and later in time, harvesting crops and plowing fields. Stone tools were made on different types of rocks. So what is a rock? A rock is composed of minerals. They are formed in many ways and are divided into sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed from fragments of other rocks when they are buried and compressed over a long time. Can you see these layers? Here is a stone tool made on a sedimentary rock called sandstone. Igneous rocks are formed due to past volcanic activities. Here is a stone tool made on basalt a type of igneous rock. Metamorphic rocks are formed when heat and pressure alter a pre-existing rock. Here's a tool made on quartzite. Prehistoric populations chose rocks that broke in a very particular way, called a conchoidal fracture. They also knew where to source these rocks and how to quarry them if needed. Other rocks, like calcite, break very differently and cannot be used to make tools. Prehistoric people were indeed very clever and knew all about rock properties. Can you see the different colors on this map? These are different rocks used by prehistoric people in northern Tamil Nadu. Rocks can tell us a lot about past behavior. Were rocks available nearby or were they carried over long distances? How many different types of rocks were used? Could these rocks be carried easily? Were these easy or difficult to collect? What were the properties of these rocks? In India, many different types of rocks were used to make tools. They came in all sorts of shapes and pretty colors. Do you think they chose rocks because they were beautiful as well? Here are the stones that were used to make tools in prehistoric India. Granite, dolerite, and basalt, which are igneous rocks, chert, limestone, sandstone and quartzite, out of which quartzite is a metamorphic rock, while the other three are sedimentary. So let's look at stone tools in India. Did you know that the first Paleolithic stone tool was found in India by Robert Bruce Foote way back in 1863? How do you think he identified it? Let's see how. At prehistoric sites, we see cores, or the parents from which flakes were struck off. Can you see the core and the scars left behind by the detached flakes? Flakes, or pieces that were stuck off from cores. We can identify flakes by looking at clues. Can you see the clues on this flake? The bulb of percussion and the striking platform where it was hit? What else can you see? We can also find hammers made of stone, bone, or antler that were used to knock off flakes. Can you see this stone hammer with marks of where it hit the core? Is this a tool? If not, why? 
we can come across a great deal of waste that comes from making tools as well. And finally, we also find lots of tools from prehistory. How were stone tools made? The simplest way was to knock off or nap flakes from cores on pebbles and cobbles. Bipolar napping. Can you see the anvil supporting the pebble that broke into two halves? Each half can be used to make stone tools. Bifacial flaking. Here are tools knocked off both faces of a piece to get a symmetrical shape as seen in this hand axe here. This technology is seen from about 1.7 million years ago in the Indian Lower Paleolithic Acheulean. Lavalois Technologies This is a very clever way to first carefully plan and shape your core in a particular way and then knock off a flake with a predetermined shape. Blade Technologies These long, parallel-sided blades were struck off cores in many ways. Here, a punch is being used to knock off blades. Sometimes, the pressure was used to strike off tiny blades and the rocks were often heated. Tiny little tools called microliths were made in many different ways, retouched and hafted onto handles. Much later, during the Neolithic phase, celts were made by using a different technique involving flaking and polishing. See how polished this axe is? How do archaeologists find stone tools? Archaeologists survey or search for prehistoric sites using many methods. They excavate or dig sites very, very slowly, brushing away ancient soils to reveal stone tools. They sieve the soils to recover tiny fragments of stone that were knocked off when tools were made thousands and thousands of years ago. They take photos and videos and make maps of what they find. You can also learn how to excavate just like archaeologists. Visit us to experience the past. We move from the field to the lab. All artifacts are packed, sometimes with cotton or other preservatives, labeled and brought back to the lab where they are carefully stored and analyzed. How are stone tools studied in the lab? Archaeologists begin by thinking of many questions they're interested in. Can you think of your own questions? First, they look at the type of tool and give it a name. They record lots of other features on tools, rock types, colors, flake scars, striking platforms, and lots of other clues that help them dive deeper into the minds of prehistoric people. They measure tools including their length, breadth, thickness, and weight. 3D models of stone tools help us analyze them in very clever ways and compare tools across the world. We can take lots of photographs, stitch them together, and then run statistical tests. How do we know how tools were made and used in the past? Archaeologists can study modern groups who still use stone tools. One way is through experimental napping. It involves making stone tools today the way early humans would, with the same materials and same techniques. They use tools in experiments for cutting wood, scraping wood or bamboo, peeling and cutting tubers, cutting flesh and bones of animals, preparing hides, hunting, engraving, and making other tools. What else do you think stone tools can be used for? These are some clips of testing stone tools on different objects. Archaeologists can even study the edges of tools under high-power microscopes and detect clues that help us understand how tools were used in the past. At well-preserved sites, residues of ancient starch or other materials can be picked up using special methods, helping us to figure out how the tool was used or even hafted. Once all the analysis is done, archaeologists write books and articles about prehistoric sites and people learning more and more about the deep past in India. What should you do if you find stone tools? Do not pick them up. Take lots of photos and make notes of what you found and where you found it. 
Record everything and contact your teacher and local authorities. Stone tools are a fascinating source of information about our prehistoric ancestors. Learning all about stone tools can help us bring alive the fascinating ways in which different species lived across the very landscapes surrounding you or buried under your feet. Contact the Sharma Center for Heritage Education if you want to know more about Indian prehistory. Thank you.